And welcome back to Coindesk Live. I'm Pete Rizzo, editor for Coindesk. We're here in New, uh, Coindesk's New York studios, uh, breaking down Facebook's trip to Washington today. Where the first of two hearings were held in the U.S. Congress about the social media giant's plan to issue a cryptocurrency, Libra. Uh, of course, comments from uh, Calibra CEO David Marcus are in the books today, but we're bringing you expert insights uh, from a range of commentators uh, around the industry, breaking down uh, what the hearings mean for the industry, for investors, and for just cryptocurrency enthusiasts in general. Uh, to, my, to my right, I have uh, Nisa Amoyles, a venture capitalist investor uh, and securities lawyer focused on the convergence of blockchain and finance. Uh, also the author of the book, WTF is Happening, Women Tech Founders on the Rise. Welcome, Nisa. Thanks for having me. So we were talking a little bit backstage. Uh, obviously, you're an investor putting capital work in the market. How does Libra change your thesis? Has it? It doesn't really change my thesis. It only really changes a thesis if you're focused pretty much on investing in payments, uh -huh. um, because then Facebook becomes, if it gets approved, becomes a dominant player, and then any other startup in that space, you know, maybe can compete or hope uh -huh. to become a feature or hope to get acquired. Um, but it does, on a macro level, uh, reduce risk. So part mm. of what I focus on in the portfolio is risk management, very important, and this eliminates some of the regulatory risk out there. So mm. I think it's very important that, I think it was intentional that um, Facebook pushed the envelope here on regulation. The same thing happened with Kick and Kin. Mm. Um, there was just too much regulatory uncertainty in the U.S., and I think so this is positive mm. that this is happening right now. Uh, so how are we, how has Facebook's Libra created a more, uh, more clear regulatory environment? Well, it hasn't yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so you're saying that's the aspiration? Th that's the aspiration, oh, okay. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's forcing regulators to take a serious position mm -hmm. in how these things, you know, what laws, mm -hmm. if any, will regulate uh, Libra. Mm -hmm what you know what the sec is going to do about kick and kin mm. and so it's not just reactionary um it's more okay you know if this gets approved what does it mean for other projects that are mm. going to launch after this um you know which lane or which bucket does facebook fall into mm. according to how the regulators Want it to go? Uh, so, so you don't. So, so you're, you're talking about payments here. So, Libra, uh, you think can be very successful in the payments uh, vertical. But I, I noticed that David Marquez today he talked a lot about uh, something interesting was integrating with financial uh, services providers, maybe to build additional things on top of Libra. How does that then not create uh, other disruption? I guess, or by removing barriers for startups in those areas. Mm -hmm. It does. He talked a lot about. Um, the entrepreneurial efforts intentionally um, being open source mm. and allowing developers to come in on top and build wallets or other products on top of um, what they've already laying the right. groundwork for. Definitely a platform play, it seems exactly. like. Yeah. Exactly. So I think in that sense, um, that encourages uh, entrepreneurial development um, if that happens then that's a good thing for the ecosystem. So if a startup came to you and they said, our business plan is we want to grow on Libra, that, that is something that you would consider? Well, at in. this moment, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens. Right, right. But in the future, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. I mean, that's a huge base, right? Your to to total addressable market right there is potentially 2 billion users mm -hmm. of Facebook. So do you think it changes the game in terms of where startups are looking to put their time and dollars? Yet. Not yet, but it could. It could, uh -huh. yeah. And that's because Facebook here has decided to put money at the infrastructure level versus something else. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, they're still going to build Calibra. Right? right. They're still going to have their own wallet. Mm -hmm. But they're not saying that you need to exclusively use Calibra. Mm -hmm. And so you mentioned, uh, we were talking backstage a bit about the other token, right? So Facebook has a... Uh, promised a two-token uh, plan. There will be a stable cryptocurrency, which users will, will get to use, and then there's the investor cryptocurrency, of which uh, the 100 uh, Libra Association members will get to benefit from. Uh, you said you were excited about that. Well, I think it's interesting because mm -hmm. it's a large security token offering. It wasn't mentioned at all in the hearings, but mm. that wouldn't be something that this group would be regulating. It would be the SEC if it's a security token. Right. Um, so I think hopefully maybe that'll come up tomorrow. Uh, and why um, do you hope that that comes up? Because I think 
uh, the security token industry is in its nascency. We've seen about maybe 10 tokens issued in trading. Most of them have been either real estate structured debt or they've been um, LP interests in funds. Mm. And I think if Facebook issues actually issues um, a security token, it'll be the biggest one that has ever happened. Right. And it, it, could be, it could move that industry forward in a big one. Yeah, I guess the question is uh, what approval they would need there since there's a handful of participants and are they going through a process well, there? Well, yeah. if that's true, I think that there are early investors in or, you know, mm. constituents in the association and that's more, more like a venture play because they'll be mm. investing in that and if the network effect takes off, their returns could be huge. Right. But then, you know, that security token could be open up to other either accredited investors or maybe even unaccredited investors if those laws change. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Once again, taking questions uh, on Periscope and on YouTube here. Uh, so we, you know, we mentioned startups uh, obviously always have to think about regulation. Uh, do you think Facebook is being a bit over ambitious here? Do you think they're making a mistake by going to regulators and uh, I guess asking for permission? I don't think they had another choice. Mm. Uh, <laughs> because of their track record. Hmm. Um, well, you mentioned Kick and Kin. You know, obviously we saw that right. so they, they didn't ask permission. Right, they pushed <laughs> it too. But I, I think there's a lot of legal theater going on behind the scenes here that hmm. may not be at the forefront. I, I think that um, the lawyers know what they're doing. Um, I think they intentionally structured this, um, you know, for Swiss regulation, for hmm. example. And I don't think there's naivety. I think that Facebook it knew that you know they wanted to bring regulators along for the ride. It's sort of similar to Blockstack in that mm. um, Blockstack you know says they're a utility token, but they still spent one to two million dollars on legal fees to comply with becoming a security token or, or getting the approval. Hopefully, it's not mm. final yet, mm. but that they will. Um, just to get the clarity, and I think that they're doing it that on the behalf of the industry, and I think Facebook also had the resources to do it on behalf of the industry, and mm. that's what they're doing. So, do you think the infrastructure phase of the investment in the cryptocurrency industry is over with with Facebook entering, or is this another stage of the infrastructure? Because I, I guess I keep going back to my long timeline for how cryptocurrency is going to develop, and you know, one of the things I find myself saying in conversations to people, oh, it's really early. It's you know, we're still just building the pipes for, for this thing. Right. Um, so how does that does this? Are we entered? Have we entered a new phase because of Facebook, or are we still going to fight at the infrastructure level for a while longer? Think? I, I think there's different kinds of infrastructure. Mm. Uh, Facebook is just one kind, okay. you know, in the payments, and I think there's still custody, there's settlement, there's clearing, there's mm. data. Um, all these are still being built out. Mm. There's been a lot of progress on them in the past year or two. Mm. And so I think that's why you see the institutional interest peaking and um, that will continue to happen. Mm. Mm. Um, and more and more players like you know, Bact and Fidelity and mm. TD Ameritrade. And I guess their their service layer, right? I guess maybe you look at it, CD and uh, you know uh, Fidelity and those large. They're providing liquidity to the market. Mm -hmm. Facebook here is trying to actually. It seems, if you use the internet analogies, like they're trying to own uh, the underlying uh, technology standards. It would almost seem at this point. Is that a, the way you look at it? Or? No. I, I think that they're doing their own initially permission blockchain, which mm. they say will become decentralized over time. So is this an AOL? This is more an AOL model. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I always say it's like the AOL moment. Mm. It's like um, or intranets or mm. whatever you want to say the Netscape moment. But I guess AOL was done by a startup, right? AOL it was, and the yeah. difference here is that this is being done by an association. Mm. So you had other stable coins like Circle, Gemini, mm. and. The difference here is that this is being done by a consortium instead of one company, mm. and instead of being back to one asset, it's a basket of currencies. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different, but I, mm. I still think that infrastructure build out has investable opportunities. What, was there anything that surprised you in the hearing today, just in terms of the question, the nature, tone? I guess uh, I, I didn't. I didn't expect the tone of some of the senators to be quite as scathing as it was. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> um, right. 
I, you know, I, I, I expected them to control the narrative, mm. um, but I think I expected more talk about uh, other cryptocurrencies. That didn't happen. I believe that's because oh, Coin right, Center right. Okay. Did, wanted to keep Bitcoin out of the crossfire. Mm. And, um, so that's probably a good thing. But I expected um, maybe uh, one senator talked about the actual workings of the, you know, mm. how this would work. Will Libra be embedded in WhatsApp and Instagram versus other wallets? Will, you know, will Facebook allow users to use other wallets freely or encourage it, mm. um, you know, about the data sharing? Uh, I, I didn't expect it to be quite so focused on Facebook's history of mm. bad actions. Mm. Yeah, I guess my takeaway from there is I was surprised that the negativity was directed at Facebook and not at cryptocurrency. And it seemed like the the discussion of cryptocurrency was actually on the whole pretty positive. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. which is a good thing. Mm. Yeah. But I, I wonder if it's almost like because they were so negative about Facebook, they couldn't then also be, you know, there's a limit to how negative <laughs> you'd be in a setting, I guess. But it's interesting. Um, uh, so I've asked this question to the other guests. Do you feel like you are rooting for Facebook? I'm rooting for clarity. Mm. I'm rooting for risk reduction. I don't know that it has to be Facebook that's the one to do it. Um, it could be another thing. Uh, but I think um, clarity is a good thing. And so in that sense, I'm rooting for the outcome to see mm. what it's going to be. Like you may think well, it's, yeah, what do it's you think dead. The, uh... Yeah. You may think there's no way mm. uh, it's uh, going to pass. I don't. Well, I, I think. Um, hmm, so you're asking me about my comment. I was just yes. not thinking that Facebook is going to work out. I think that we've we've tended to see in cryptocurrency large multi constituent projects. I think that is a thing that we have seen over the course of time, right? So I would guess I'd preface that by saying. Um, you know, with the distributed ledger and blockchain innovations out of the banking world, we saw large consortiums emerge. I think we've seen some of that within the cryptocurrency industry. And I just don't think multi-stakeholder models work. I think what Bitcoin really got right was the alignment of incentives, right? It's that each party gets to be self-interested but participatory in the network. Right. And as I look at Facebook's Libra, it's like, well, who's self-interested here? Mm -hmm. You know, there's Facebook is self-interested because it's their project, I guess. But who is really going to fight to keep Libra around, right? I guess that's the question. When you look at what happened with R3 and these kind of things, it's like, you know, I, I guess you get to the nature of like with Bitcoin, it was skin in the game. That was ultimately what it was able to do. Bitcoin, uh, I think Stan Higgins, who I, who I work with, he, he changes the, 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 the you know, he, he always harps on the biggest thing with Bitcoin is it changed human behavior. You know, it was, it was, a, it was a technology protocol, but it, it, it warped how people used it. And I think I, I just don't see how those incentives align with Facebook where if I'm, you know, uh, constituent number 70 of the uh, Libra Blockchain Association and my local regulator is coming and knocking on my door and sending me 50 emails a day, why don't I just leave? <laughs> you know, I think that'll be, it'll, it'll be interesting to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, do you think, like with R3, it was uh, a bunch of banks and you know, they're competitive with each other. Yeah, but I feel like people think write off R3 these days as something that like wasn't, like didn't have like an intellectual basis. I think it did, right? I, we didn't know that you could. So, so when I look at R3, I look at ultimately like a group of banks decided to think that, okay, can we use cryptography and peer-to-peer -peer networking? And can we get rid of this token network? And can we just use our economies of scale to basically force blockchain technology or to harness it? Um, that thesis, I don't think, has been like totally thrown out. It was sort of intellectually valid at the time, right? Um, can you sort of take the components of it and apply it to banking? Um, not sure where I'm quite going with that, but I, I think that it, I think people like dismiss those things as things that weren't set up by well-intentioned people who had the money to get things done and didn't. And so when I look at Facebook. Um, I have a trouble not seeing the same thing. There, it's a well-intentioned group of people who have the capital to get things done, but ultimately, is this something that they're going to follow through with, or are right. they going to stop? The thing about Bitcoin is it, ha it has to continue. Right. Like, just it can't stop being a thing, right? Right. The next block has to be mined. Like, the the network has to be economically viable. There are certain conditions under which Bitcoin, like, quite simply, has to, <laughs> like, do things, mm -hmm. and that and that's like a definite yes or no state. Whereas R3 can like not exist. Well, I, I'm just very interested in this R3 comparison because oh. <laughs> you have 
banks yeah. that are competing with each other, and it was a different time. Uh -huh. This is a much, diff you know, this is a bigger scale project coming from yeah. not everybody's competing with each other. Yeah, Visa, MasterCard, okay, PayPal. But then you have venture capitalists yeah. in there, you have nonprofits in there, you have, uh, there's no retailers yet, uh, interestingly. But uh -huh. you have other, um, you know, they're not all competing with each other. Uh, they may view this at a time where it's more about their survival now than it was back then uh, uh, because they've seen the evolution of Bitcoin. Yeah, so you're saying that you think these groups of stakeholders are maybe more apt to finish uh, or to see it through to fruition? Um, I mean, we'll have to, that's right. we'll have to see, right? right? I mean, I would say that um, if there's been a single party who's been really bad at cryptocurrency, it's the Silicon Valley, like investor, because I think I've just done, have never sort of really been on the pulse of where things are going. I mean, you look at their historical dismissal of stable coins, which have now become, you know, I mean, Facebook, Libra is a cryptocurrency, right. uh, is a stable is coin. a stable coin. Right, but nobody wanted to invest in Tether. Right. Tether makes up 70% of the cryptocurrency economy and was fundamentally a company that nobody ever wanted to invest in. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you square that, those things, like looking back? I don't know, I, 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 I find that like I try to go back and look at these things because there's so much excitement in the present. It's really mm -hmm. easy to be excited about things you're looking that are happening right now. And Facebook seems very exciting, like all these partners, they, they seem really great. Um, but then you look back at the things that happen and it's like, well, how is it any worse or better than this other thing? You know, it's a similar model. It's like you got together a bunch of companies, you, you promised them that there would be future blockchain rewards. I, I, you know what I struggle with? I, I struggle with how is Facebook's cryptocurrency not a business blockchain in the definition that was pushed a couple of years ago? Right. They're calling it a cryptocurrency. They are. That, that is a significant change. Right. But uh, from a technical level, right. what is the difference? <laughs> not, <laughs> there know. is none right, right now. If it becomes permissionless, then you mm. know, I don't know how they're going to get there. But if it does, then it changes. But yeah, um, I think that well, it will be interesting. <laughs> 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 That's always a good thing to default yeah. to. I think we've got a, a couple questions uh, flowing in here. Uh, uh, let's see, I have got. don't understand this question, but I'll take a couple words from it. Trump's decision. So uh, obviously we've seen President Trump enter into the conversation about cryptocurrencies. Uh, is that good or bad for what you're doing as an investor? Uh, what do you think about just the, that this might become an election issue, this might become something that politicians have to have a stance on? Do you, right. you see that happening? Uh, yeah, I think that's already happening. I think a Forbes article like three days mm. ago after uh, the mm. tweet happened. Andrew Yang already has, um, commented on it. There's another candidate, mm. Democratic, uh, who's also now made it part of their um, campaign. I think more and more people, now that it's now that he's tweeted about it, mm. they will make it part of their campaign. Because so you think he forces the conversation? He forces yeah. the conversation, yeah. Um, so as an investor, I think that's a good thing because yeah. it just brings more awareness to it's the like space. like all publicity is good publicity. Well, I mean, <laughs> to a degree. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's that, uh, that that's pretty interesting. The emergence of, uh, of of Bitcoin in DC. I think you, it sounds like you're optimistic that you'll get clarity. We don't really know what clarity means, uh, per se. I guess what's a win for Facebook here uh, at these hearings tomorrow, in your opinion? I think they just need to go through the motions here. Mm -hmm. That um, this is just part of the process. So and part partly it's theater. Mm -hmm. So I think that. For tomorrow, uh, if it's less scathing than it was today, yeah. that would be a win. So it sounds like you walked away and you said uh, this this looked bad for Facebook. I think so. Mm. Um, yeah. And what uh, are it, I mean, yeah. I think because it just reminded whoever was watching all the litany of things mm. Facebook had done, which maybe weren't at the forefront of mm. their minds. Um, but I think that um, a win would be obviously... Um, they decide which of these committees are going to, you know, which lane this is going to right, fall right. into, who's going to really regulate this. Um, to me, that would be a startling yeah. one-day decision. Yeah, for, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I think uh, this is going to take a lot of time. A uh, question rolled in the channel from uh, Frank Cruz. Thanks for asking. Uh, will other stable coins uh, need to register with U.S. regulators as a result of Libra taking this approach? I guess there's no way you can answer that, but no. I think it's interesting. Yeah, it is. Like, do you think that other stablecoin projects will 
made to like register as what is is well as I guess a yeah bank, because they have, they, uh, like a banking regulation because they have no as a formal security ITD. as you know I guess the answer there was yeah. MakerDAO is decentralized. So unless they were ordered to by some authority, right. I don't think that that could right. possibly impact them. Yeah, and I think as law goes, it's case by case basis. Right, right, right. I just think the question also points to just that you know stable coins. So we've obviously seen a great pro proliferation of them, um, but not really many winners at this point. Or maybe the market's too saturated. How do you look at stable coins? Yeah, it's interesting with Caitlin Long's mm. article yesterday about why stable coins even became important mm. and that's because it was so hard for banking regulation you know to to be issued mm. um and so that led to the rise in stable coins um have they been super successful you know um like i mean it depends on how you value success yeah I mean, exactly I, I think we yeah. don't get the 2017 cryptocurrency explosion without stable coins. Right. For sure. Yeah. So uh, I think it was all yeah. part of the evolution. You know, in 20 years, are we going to look back and say? I think it's like hard to understand, like before Tether, and this is why I, so I don't know, I, maybe it wasn't us talking about it backstage, but I found myself being like a weird Tether defendant, like, because I think it's hard to imagine like how like strange the cryptocurrency market was before Tether. It's like you had some exchanges that did like individual dollar or fiat pairings, mm -hmm. and then you had some crypto only exchanges. Um, it, it's hard to like understate just like the cohesiveness that Tether provided to the cryptocurrency market. It's always tough to be a pioneer. You're getting mm. arrows in your back, right? Yeah, and that's why that's why I kind of look at something like Tether, and I look at Facebook, and I like I wonder what the. I mean, obviously, it doesn't seem like they're going for similar things. It seems like the big question here is that. We still have a backbone of the cryptocurrency economy that is that is not ideal. From an investor standpoint, that must be something that is appealing, I guess, to own or benefit from that market in some right, way. Right. Right. Um, well, when you're investing in the infrastructure, it's it's mm. good to be early. And, and that. well, I guess like you know, so I see like Coinbase and Gemini, and mm -hmm. these people have moved towards the stablecoin model. It's mm -hmm. like they want to keep the market robust. Um, it's hard to see what is gained from that, though, from an investor standpoint. Right. Um, hmm. All right, moving on. Um, we talked about tomorrow, so it sounds like they're going to go into the the house uh, next to discuss uh, some things. What are some topics that you think are going to reappear tomorrow, based on a lack of questioning or lack of, lack of response today? Mm -hmm. Privacy will be first mm -hmm. and foremost again tomorrow. Um, how they will use the data? Will it be commingled between Calibra mm -hmm. and Libra? Um, the the um, charter, the governance charter for the Libra Association that he mm. mentioned was in the process of being ratified. Okay. Um, I think maybe there'll be some more questions about that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, some of the details of how that works. Isn't it remarkable what adults are allowed to do in public? It's clear that that's, that was my, my thought when I was watching what he said <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. So you're gonna release a constitution for your weird multi-company stakeholder thing that's launching your money, and that's 2019, I guess. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so I think there'll be some more questions about that. Oh. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think maybe um, some of the other constituents uh, mm. might eventually be pulled in here because mm. it's just David Marcus defending the entire. Uh, so doing a great job over there. Yeah, take, take it's a, a tough seat to yeah. be in. Um, although I'm sure he was prepped, but still. Mm. Uh, there was a guy from the CFTC here earlier. Yeah. Was talking about how they used to do. Uh, he called them murder boards. I guess exactly. they would like they would they would try to like ask all these ridiculous questions. Right. The guy going up there. Right. Um, it's I like you're prepping the, uh, your witness, right? I think the Swiss the the Swiss Switzerland jurisdiction thing. I don't I don't know how they're going to get around that. Right. Um, I mean, it's uh, it's a choice that they made because it's inarguably the standard of the market. But how they defend that to U.S. regulators, I or I guess defend it. I mean, it's a arbit largely arbitrary choice, but. Well, I think they went for a country that was, you know, pretty mm, lenient towards friendly, crypto, yeah. but yet still had um, a good reputation. Um, mm. You know, they didn't choose like Puerto Rico, Malta, any of these other areas, right? True, true. Uh, true. What's, what's really interesting to me is that Alipay and WeChat mm. are way ahead of Facebook. Mm. Facebook's playing catch up here. And so 
why wasn't there a hearing back then? Uh, why wasn't there more talk about regulation in, in Asia about this? Well, maybe you can educate me on this because yeah. I'm not 100% certain. So, I mean, I obviously have WeChat because I talk to people in China, but am I, I, am I able to use yeah. some financial yeah. apps on WeChat yeah, in, in the United States? Yeah, as a user? Uh, I believe that it was one of them, Alipay or WeChat, did a deal with uh, a data, U.S. data company that allowed that. Huh, so, okay. you, so that you would be able to use it with retailers in the U.S. Oh, I'm not sure which one it was. It was a while ago. Okay. I, I mean, so I think people don't WeChat really even a, know about this, but... Um, I think, I mean, WeChat, I think, has a hard time cracking into the U.S. market for a lot of reasons that are probably more cultural than utility right. based. I mean, I remember when I first used WeChat, I was like really surprised at how functional it was. I loved the QR code thing where you can just mm -hmm. add somebody really mm -hmm. <laughs> easily. Um, so you're saying the narrative here really should be seen that, you know, the world is consolidating into a small number of social networks and this is really just a power grab from Facebook to really compete with its only competitor, which is WeChat. Right, or yeah, mm -hmm. or to compete with global competitors that, mm. you know, um, I don't think that the global competitors had such a hard regulatory path that uh, that Facebook is facing right now, I, or at least well, it wasn't well, I mean, well publicized. Do you think their path would be different if they were doing conventional e-money or they were doing like a digital? I mean, I think part of the reason that Facebook is sort of inviting this is because they're using a cryptocurrency. Again, I'll use air quotes there. Yeah. Um, do you think it's because of that or because they're Facebook? That's an interesting question. Yeah, I mean, if they were partnering with, if they had come in there with five banks and said they were going to launch financial services on their platform, um, who knows? I mean, I bet that's something that they looked at. And yeah. I'm sure that you don't arrive at. Um, I like to think that no one uh, arrives at like uh, issuing a cryptocurrency as their first idea, <laughs> like for things. Um, who knows what <laughs> banks are doing behind the scenes that ha they haven't announced yet, right? Uh, true, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. My faith in those projects is, for the same reason that we were talking about with Libra, I just, you know, too many people. you got to get the incentives right. And then mm -hmm. I think, you know, uh, I just think there's just like a weak, you know, strong, strong opinions, weakly held. This is a strong opinion, weakly mm -hmm. held, and mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to happen with it, I guess. I mean, obviously it's exciting. The conversations are great. Uh, and from a macro level, I think, and maybe I'll ask this as sort of we're winding down as sort of a final question is, you know, your, your big takeaway from, from Facebook. Um, I think I mentioned this earlier. I, you know, I, I think the, how we're now able to talk about cryptocurrency differently because of Facebook is, is a big deal. Uh, so maybe what's your big deal takeaway from this? Yeah, I mean, certainly the media exposure um, mm. and the regulatory scrutiny is the biggest deal about Facebook. Uh, whether or not it gets approved or sees the light of day, um, the conversation has changed. Um, this is a lot more serious. Everybody's now paying attention to it. It's all anybody's talking about. Um, so it's gone from this industry that was kind of like small um, or you know questionable in the shadows, you know, within our ecosystem bubble, to now mm. mainstream. Mm. And so. To me, that's why I analogize it to like that AOL moment or that Netscape moment. Mm. Um, you know, look in the rearview mirror. That that may be how we look at this mm. as a defining moment. As a defining watershed mm. moment. That, and, s yeah. and so you think that you're you're confident that their timelines. You think they're going to be able to do 2020? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, to launch it yeah, and, and launch use it, it yeah, and yeah. no, it, it'll probably take a lot longer than mm. that. It's already mid-2019, mm. mm. um, you know, regulatory scrutiny could take like another year. Um, so we'll see. Facebook Maybe. Libra in 2021. Maybe, okay. yeah. Uh, so Nisa, where can people find out more about you and your work? Thanks for asking. Um, I'm out Twitter at mm. Amoyles Nisa, uh, LinkedIn, and my website, nisaamoyles.com. Great, and thanks for everybody who tuned in and asked questions. A couple great ones there. Uh, we'll get back with our last guests at 5 p.m., uh, we'll be seeing you on uh, Periscope and YouTube. Uh, and uh, once again, thanks for watching. You can find more great content about Facebook's uh, trip to D.C. on our website, coindesk.com.